ePod Studios. This is Charlie McAvoy. One down, lined up, and just leveled by McAvoy out at center ice. On your home for Bruins Hockey, 98.5, the Sports Hub. Zillak and Bertrand get you through the workday at 10. Right now, it's Toucher and Hardy on the Sports Hub. All right, uh, if Hardy had just uh, held his cards a little closer to his vest and done what his gut told him and turned down this gig, he could have been going to Las Vegas, Nevada for the Super Bowl because the middays and afternoons will be broadcasting from there next week. Fred, you're lazy. Why will you not be going there? But the truth is, is that it's pointless and I would be being a complete a-hole if I went because you have that. It's not just us. It's forcing other people to get up and schlep to a convention center at 2 in the morning, one thirty in the morning, because they have to set everything up. They got to get up at one thirty in the morning and sit there from one thirty in the morning and then sit there all day. I really did feel guilty. You can believe me or not, but I would sit there and be like, I can't believe we're making this person sit in a dark conference center where they're not even making coffee yet. Well, they weren't, you know, sending like separate producers, engineers for every show. It was pretty much... Two. So either Jim Louth or maybe Jimmy Stewart would have to work yeah. a double shift. Um, if Felger and Maz were there, then, you know, he would come in and, and maybe do the mornings. I know Jim Louth did a lot of like eight hour, you know, mm-hmm. running the board, which, oh, eight hour day. How dare you? There's a lot of other stuff to do out there while you're, you know, being a boss and a producer. So those were. Absurdly long days for those guys when there was another show to yeah, sit there. And but we'll go to we'll go to L.A. But we'll tape the show and then okay. we'll do the East Coast ones. But I am not uh, L.A. is two years, uh, three years, three years. So it's New Orleans next year. Yeah. San, Fr- San Francisco Levi Stadium. Uh... Hello, <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah, I'm telling you what. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny when people used to say San Francisco? That's what people would say. Yeah, I know it was like, like Robin. That's Robin Williams. Like, hello, San Francisco. Right. You're like what? I just think of homeless, many, many homeless, an aggressive homeless. Yes, very aggressive homeless. Yes. Well, not, we, not like Dorchester slapping your car at five in the morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mass and Cass, baby, well, welcome, Mass welcome and to Cass, Boston. baby. That was my way That's to work. That's more of a combative homeless, oh, as opposed was... to the San Francisco like chase you down, talk to you, yeah. won't leave you alone. Yeah, like, that type of aggressive homeless. Like uh, to steal an onion joke, you could tell the guy had some like background in nuclear physics, like, and he lost his mind on acid. Like he he seems like a little too involved with the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> to to be homeless. Like, you can tell this guy is like, there's a fine line between doctorate professor and homeless. <laughs> like, like they, there is like a fine line of genius where... <laughs> Overeducated to the point where your brain implodes. It's really, a beautiful like, mind. It, it's a beautiful... It, it really is. is like, a, like it to is. be able to like conceptualize like this like out there stuff. Like when people start talking to you about dark matter or like the yeah. universe and like it's almost like you have to open a part of your brain that's like closed off like it's like yeah. it's it, people can, can be so smart and their brains work and like they've it's almost like they've opened up a part of their brain that i don't have access to like theologians and stuff like people that think about the vastness of the universe or the like the reality of of being and and like like if it, if someone told you how do you get electricity in your house like it, like if, like how do you do it like how did you think of it like how do you think of it like how do when you take a medicine? How they think of like how did that all work? Like just getting down to it, it's like it takes a different mind. So anyway, like they in, on the you know East Bay, they started to open up their minds through hallucinogens, you know, and then they they wanted to open up spiritual paths in their brains. Yeah, yeah. and so I think that you're walking a very like the Tim Leary esque thin line yeah. of like. Are Unfortunately, we, the razor's madness. edge, baby. Yeah. yeah, it's a razor's edge of like, am I going to come up with plutonium or yeah. am I going to be like, you know, bugging you? The madness yeah, portion of the line is right next you to down. the brilliant portion. Yes, <laughs> chasing you down outside of Starbucks in downtown San Francisco. Yeah, like, are, is this going to be like a, an uncomfortable yeah. thing going into the? Uh, Giants game, or is this going to be a, uh, <laughs> or is this guy going to be doing a lecture, a TED talk? 
It's a very thin line. All right. So anyway, so if you are questioning or not going to the Super Bowl, which I'm sure all of you were, you were dying to get us to go because we've we had the Jim Gray thing the once. But that was Atlanta, and that was because I wanted to drink with Crash. All right, so uh, we have been offered these. You have, you have. There's a collection of guests we've been offered. Right, and I, I brought this up to you guys yesterday in our post show meeting, which goes for hours. This type of show doesn't come together on a whim. I mean, we sit for hours, sometimes into the wee hours, planning the next day's show. And I said, "Hey guys, I did get an offer of a guest." So this first one will give you an idea of the type of thing that we get offered here pretty regularly. Um, for stories you may be working on, on the reported North Atlantic right whale death off the northeast coast of Martha's Vineyard, please feel free to use the below from the International Fund for Animal Welfare. There's a quote included along with a guest offered up saying that at this time, the identity and cause of death of this whale are both unknown. So at that time, they had not ID'd the whale. Um, I would say, wow, that's such a weird thing, but it's not the only weird guest that we get offered. So I have two more here. You know that that is a correct one because I shared it with you yesterday. Absolutely. I have two more. You have to guess which one is the real one and which one is the fake one. Are you ready? Can we have some for your consideration music, please, Dan O'Brien? Very nice. For your consideration. Deborah Presley Brando. This just sounds like a Northeast Men's Health Clinic. <laughs> is that what? The, is that the music they play in the lobby when you walk in? <laughs> it just, it's like a mushroom sprouting from a field of... Time-lapse hey. phot- photography? <laughs> Time-lapse photography. This sounds like a man getting his first direction after years of impotence. We are pleased to offer Deborah Presley Brando. Elvis Presley's first biological daughter and ex-wife of Marlon Brando's late son. Her new autobiography, Memoirs of a Starseed Child, Elvis, Marlon, Christian, and Me, traces her life. Am I the only one who got horny when you think of Starseed? Before and (laughs) after that fateful day, I thought of the uh, Our Lady Peace song. Starseed! Starseed! They were very bitter and they never got bigger. All right. So that is the first one for you to consider. Here's another guest we've been offered. Gentlemen, we have a few spots left on Friday morning to be part of the 40th anniversary celebration of Break Into Electric Boogaloo. Oh, well, okay. Shabadoo is Ozone. Lucinda Dickey is Kelly. Shabadoo is dead. And Mike. You have given, you have played your hand too far. I want to be played. I so want to be be real. You have played your hand, sir, right into my hands. You didn't know you were dealing with a breakdancing. I knew that. You did not know you were dealing with a breakdancing historian. That Shabadoo uh, is dead. He is dead. So it is not breaking. No. Indeed, the real guest is the uh, seed of one uh, who Richard Pryor had sex with Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear Marlon Brando, no, if you don't think that this hurts people, the, o- the only thing I hear now, think of now is that Richard Pryor had gay sex with Marlon Brando. That's all I hear. And not Marlon Brando of On the Waterfront. Marlon Brando of uh, the island of uh, 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 Doctor Doctor Moreau, Moreau. Yeah. like fat Marlon Brando. Yeah. Go ahead. Was it? Was I'm trying to, let me ask you a silly question here? What is a? Was it a drug infused encounter for Richard Pryor? Anyway? Oh no, no, it was like at the end when he was all shaky and thin. No, it was. Yeah, I would imagine it was the Harlem Nights. Richard Pryor? No, no. Uh, was, I think it was pre Harlem. I think it was. Yeah, I think he was in the thick of it. I think this yeah. is you know live on town. the Sunset Strip. Yeah, this oh. is lighting on fire. All right, I got it. When he lit himself on fire. Yeah. And if and look, no, I mean there is stuff on the web of Richard Cor- Pryor. So, gentlemen, for your cocaine. consideration. Deborah Presley Brando, Elvis's first biological daughter, ex-wife of Christian Brando. Yes. Now, who is Christian Brando? Marlon Brando's late uh, son, Christian. No, I, I, he obviously died before his time. But why? Uh, why should we know Christian Brando? Uh, because uh, he was Marlon Brando's son. That's. Uh, I don't know any other reason to know Christian Brando. Well, it's no but Emilio she, Estevez. She wrote it. She wrote it. Would, would not take the Sheen name because he did not want the the treatment. Are we Are we going to say no to this guest? I I think that was a guest that should be out. No, that sounds like one that Dolph would no. take. All right, a few more here, gentlemen. Shabadoo Jones, like I'm some rookie. Jen Drummond. Well, we are offering Jen Drummond following a new. She's dead, Mrs. Dr- All of Drummond's <laughs> childs are dead. Every single one of them. Following is a, Todd Bridges dead? Following a nearly is he still alive? Nearly fa- fatal no. car accident. How did Todd Bridges? 
Is he's he still, still alive? He's still alive. Oh, wow. I don't think. Is he? Yeah. No. Dana Plato. Everyone's telling Dana, Dana Plato's Plato dead. dead. Gary Coleman. Dana Plato made a run on Growing Pains as a loose as a goose classmate of one Kirk Cameron's. Oh. And, Todd Bridges uh, still as, alive? Dressed as the like a virgin, Madonna. Wow. I would have thought Bridges would be gone. No. Oh, that. you would have thought he was dead? Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. Considering everyone else on that show is gone, including Edna Garrett. Anyway, you were saying, Hardy? Sorry. Uh, no, Todd, <laughs> Hardy now, was saying now, he's now not down drunk. Todd Bridges' uh, rabbit hole, uh, Bridges wrote a book called Killing Willis, From Different Strokes to the Mean Streets to the Life I Always Wanted. Hell of a roller skater. Oh. He was on an episode of Chips where they did a roller disco. Um, and then Todd Bridges could roll. He could have roller skate like no one's business. Speaking of killing, uh, Jen Drummond following a nearly fatal car accident. Novice mountain climber sets world record as first and only woman to climb second highest summits on each of seven continents. <laughs> How long ago was the car accident? I don't know, but do you get to go? Do you get to do a radio tour? There's no if way you've you made only this climbed up. the second highest summit. There, there's no way. And by the way, like like every CEO's climbed mountains. You're not novel. Yeah. yeah. And there's, like, blind guys that have climbed the mountains. There's, like, paraplegics that have climbed the mountains. A big deal. And how long ago was the car accident? Because I'll tell you this. If the car accident was 10 years ago, you know how many people have died since then? Like, 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 like you didn't die. Like, you're alive. And a lot of people have died. It's bizarre. That seems like a really weird guess. Like, a, like a fairly average mountain climber that one time was in a wreck, as opposed to all of you who have never been in a car accident. Uh, guess number two. Ever wonder why your bird feeder has a wait list? Have you asked why these cuckoo birds haven't you flown south for up. the winter? You made that up. Aviary expert John, <laughs> Dr. John Mandelman, will inform your it's listeners as to why some John birds Mandelman. vamoose goose while others make <laughs> your home theirs during these winter months. John, that's fake, isn't it? Yeah. You would know. Yes, you, we, you haven't heard the third one yet. Oh. No, John would know if that bird expert, because he, he would have at least called John. Frontman and founding men, member of British heavy metal band Saxon. It's true. Because we'll come it, on your show to talk about the new al- new album and single, plus upcoming European and U.S. tours with Judas Priest and Uriah Heep. You know why oh, I'm yeah. a you know why I'm a loser. Not only did I know Shabadoo Jones was fake, I know this is true. And I know it's true because Mike Lockhart heard the singer from this band on the Eddie Trunk show two days ago. He's talking about that. That is true. That was in the big post show meeting. If you question this show and the work of this staff, but I knew Shabadoo Jones was dead. And Mike Lockhart knew that the dude from Saxon not only is doing press... But he was on the Eddie Trunk show no. two days ago. That's right. And who still listens to Saxon? Chris Rucker. <laughs> and it all comes together, ladies and gentlemen. And Chris Rucker used to work at the station. I was, But would not fly, so he would never have been in Vegas. Shabadoo Jones, that's on me. I screwed that one up. I was very proud of ever wonder why your bird feeder has a wait list. And have you ever asked why these cuckoo birds haven't flown south for the winter? Plus, I used the name of an actual person, Dr. John Mandelman, who is actually like more of a aquarium shark expert guy. Oh, okay. Former neighbor of mine. Yeah. You don't But think- that sounded like a legit guess. It did. It did. Come on. John would have known that it was a bird expert, and he would have known because the bird expert at least would have called to see if he was a creation of a if he was some kind of bird man. Everyone knows that John, uh, when he goes uh, number two, it is white as it is white as Ted Knight's hair. Well, that's it. You went two for two. Congratulations. Who was listening to the Saxon box set? The bit is ruined. It was hard. It was Rucker. Oh, it was Rucker. Okay. And I said, "There's no. You don't like Saxon." I said, "You don't like him. You don't like him. You're doing because he was blaring Saxon in his office." And I said, "You don't like Saxon. You're doing this for the benefit of everyone." To seem like different, dude. No, Saxon are good. Denim and leather, rep, dude. Denim and leather is good album. No, it's not. No, it's not. You don't like it, and you're playing it this loud. You don't play. Ironically. Yeah, you don't play like th- th- like novel stuff, or you don't play like regular stuff this loud. You're playing garbage this loud to announce to everyone that you got it for free, because there's no way you paid for it. 
I'm a completist. This has got demos of de- denim and leather. <laughs> Before, like, it's not as chunky. It's more of a smooth mix. There you go. This is a Kip Winger mix. Beautiful, dude. Easy. That's it. Thanks, bro. Uriah Heap. I couldn't tell you one Uriah Heap. That's song. the way that it is. I told you. That was the first video I ever saw on MTV. That terrible song. Uriah Heap had a video? Yes. Well, I mean, MTV. Did. Well, they couldn't play anyone black. So MTV was like just scrounging up white dudes that had put together yeah. enough crap to, to put together a three minute song. First video I ever saw on MTV. We finally got cable in the house. I flipped it on. That video was on. The way that it is. Terrible song by Uriah Heap. Yeah, if you look at their playlist from the early 80s, because they put them on Facebook, like there's like Facebook things that do it, like it's a lot of real crap. They wouldn't play any black artists. So like they, it was real crap. Like MTV was straight up racist. They were afraid if they played black artists that people wouldn't watch. It was a real thing. You can read I Want My MTV. It was a very real thing. Like they were on the fence about playing Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, David Bowie. Yeah, you can ask about that. I mean, they were playing like real crap, real garbage because yeah. no one made videos. So they had to play Rod Stewart, Maggie Mae constantly. This is Blake Lucci from oh, the Boston hey. Bruins on 98.5. He's still getting to know the machinery, obviously. <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask one more time. So are we a yes or no on the lady who climbed the second tallest mountains everywhere? I want to talk to the lady who's playing the first, who's climbing the first tallest. She's not available. Do you want the one who climbed the second tallest? All right. Uh, Sean, we, we don't have, uh, we'll try Gorman, but I doubt we'll get him. Okay. He's supposed to join us at 820 on uh, Wednesdays. Right. But Sean Grandy was babbling on and on about the Lions. Yeah. So I could probably get you oh, fired up about that again. Yeah. Also, uh, Steph Curry is taking on a woman, much to this one woman's consternation. Sabrina Ionescu. Yeah. This woman on ESPN does not like that this woman is taking on Steph Curry. She doesn't like it. She's she's So I got to give her credit. I paid attention to what she was saying. She had a take. It's usually just a drone of garbage on ESPN. So this woman actually said something that I found dumb enough that it, that it ingrained itself into the back of my head. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like that this woman... I'll just tell... If we couldn't find it, I don't blame you for not being able to find it, but I'll just tell you what the woman said. It's really something else. She has a problem with... And it's she's for the woman three-point shooter, obviously, but she doesn't think she should do it. And the reason is is very funny to me. Because she works for <laughs> Sports Network. <laughs> All right. So we'll have that. Maybe I'll start with that. I'll just... I teased it well enough. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. All right, we'll be right back. BackstageCountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Award-winning movies often have incredible soundtracks, and many of those have gone on to become country gold. We've picked our top five country songs that have been nominated for an Oscar. Text OSCAR to 45911 to see if your favorite made the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text OSCAR to 45911, and we'll send the link straight to your phone. Which feed of this is going to be used all around the internet? Get up. The cat is finally out of the bag. Get up. We're back. Toucher and Hardy. Get up. 98.5 The Sports Hub. Front court. Derek White gets it in safe to Tatum. Pacers will not foul. A handoff to Holiday. He will not shoot. Clock gets triple zeros. And the Celtics survive another one. They win the season series from the Indiana Pacers. And they get taken in a minute 48. But they survive again. And the Boston Celtics have a four and a half game lead atop the Eastern Conference. The final score, Boston 129, Indiana 124. You know, the crowds have been amazing at these Celtic games. And Mike Gorman, during the New Orleans game, had been quiet for a while and he just explained he's like i just want he's like i want you to hear what it sounds like here it's a little something called uh, and it would and i didn't even notice he hadn't been talking because the crowd was so loud during that the new orleans game mike gorman is the voice of the boston celtics for nbc sports boston where eddie house has the worst camera of all time and he's presented by <laughs> bentley university <laughs> it's a real ghetto operation it's not a good camera a uh, bentley a force for business a force for good mike joins us on the volkswagen dealers expert hotline mike gorman hello sir hey what's up there Fred? how are you i've been uh, glued into these uh broadcasts like never before and uh, oh, really? yeah 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 i i uh, enjoy, I enjoy you, it you know you're not turning down the tv listening on the radio or your station or anything like that right? 
Oh, huge! Anything, yeah, anything yeah, radical yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta hear Grandy. Gotta get Grandy. You're, he, he's <laughs> out class. You know what? He's a class act. And uh, something that you need to learn a little something about, my friend. Right. I'll try. No, I, I just hope Taylor finds true love. That's all. Eh, well, listen, I like I like Cedric Maxwell, but uh, I'm listening to you. But the uh, it, but the the crowd it was unbelievable. I do want to tell you, ask you something though, because the New Orleans game, uh, Zion Williamson. I, yeah. I, I I don't know if I'm the only one fascinated by this, but I don't care. My son was too, actually. Have you ever seen a basketball player that winded? This time of the season during a regulation game, like it, was that as odd to you as it was to me? Yeah, it was. It, he, he was. He, they used to have this thing, you know, guys would pull it, stand there, bend over the waist, and hold it, pull their trunks down a little bit. I used to be the sign to the coach, um, "I need to come out." Uh, <laughs> Zion was running by the bench yelling, "Take me out of here!" <laughs> uh, he, 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 he wasn't even bother with any shortcuts. Um, yeah, he, you know, he reminded me of uh, and date myself that when Charles Barkley first came into the league. I used to call him around mound to rebound. He he's the closest I've ever seen because what's his name? Um, Dion's not that big. He's not that tall. He's probably six seven, uh, but he's two eighty, two ninety, um, and that's really and it's it's not two ninety. He's not all the Miller. Uh, he's probably got about a thirty six inch waist, and uh, his his shoulders go on forever. And he just takes the ball if if he can get it inside, get you on his backside, forget it. Just absolutely forget it. Nothing you can do about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did think – there were a couple of guys that I thought were gas. I thought Rick Carlisle's players were gas last night, too. I couldn't figure out what he did by playing. Did you get that whole thing where um, Halliburton had a minutes restriction of 22, 25 minutes, I think it was? Yeah, yeah 22 um, last And Rick, yeah. Rick left him in there. And then he took him out in the third quarter and couldn't play him the rest of the game. Yeah, he, yeah, he, was was weird. he would have saved Halliburton for the fourth quarter, but after six minutes of the third, he took him out, and that was the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. I know. I couldn't figure that out at all. Um, then, that, then not committing the foul – I think it was on the second last possession. Um, I couldn't figure that one out either. But it's not my scout job to figure these things out. Did you I'm think a time it was- and temperature guy? That's all I do. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> You're just like we're at the garden and there's basketball. Yeah, and that's yeah. pretty much where that's my where, where the I'm, knowledge I'm ends. Done, yeah. It was so wait, so you were confused. You didn't think there was a foul. You thought there was a foul on the on the play. What 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 play were did you did scout school you on? What was happening? On did who for, on Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I I, I couldn't tell. It's just one of those things. I have no idea what right now. So I, I see. I have one of those heads that the ears, ideas go in one side, come out the other, and right. they don't stick it off. No, so I have no brand. You talking Three about the, random. You're talking about that replay at the end of the game that took forever, where they were looking oh, for the yeah, call. Yeah. Call. Yeah. But, um, and, yeah. I never know what. First of all, I never know what they're really looking for. Uh, number two, most of the time, and they didn't have. Last night, <laughs> they either have a red light and a green light, whether it's a scoring thing or a foul. Yeah. Uh, and, and now they only had one light last night. So you never could tell what it was when, when the light went off because the other light didn't work. Yeah. Um, so, garden failure. Well, um, but anyway, it, it, it was, I, I just thought, I can't remember, to be honest with you. I can't, all I remember was that Rick made that call at that second to last possession of the game. I'm like, why are you, why are you letting Holiday go to the free throw line? Right. Um, he makes two free throws, the game's over. Uh, and um, he did, and it was. Um, but they're, they're fun to watch that team because they don't score 120 points on you no matter what. Um, and they'll run up and down the floor. Uh, it, there's a lot of teams I think I'm seeing right now that I'm thinking would be more of a factor. The Clippers, for instance, the Clippers are good, and they are big, and they are strong. Um, one of the things that hurts the Celtics, I think, a little bit, um, for singers, it definitely helps. But they're not, we're not a big, brawny team. We're a six five and under team. Um and that that's not that's an exaggeration, Joe the Americans making that, but they're just a we're not big. These other teams come in with like three guys on the front line with seven feet. We got like Al who's like fifty years old trying to hold the quarter back out there. So um this is gonna be interesting come playoffs. Jason Tatum needs to get hot in game one and stay hot for two months. Are you on the playoffs last? Are, are you surprised by how good the Clippers are? It didn't seem like that collection of players. Do you think that they have a chance to contend for a title? That collection of players, Harden, yeah, Harden, and yeah. It just it seems like there was, you know, there. Westbrook. So first of all, Ty, Ty Lewis is a really good coach. He really he, and he understands guys. He's a players' coach in, in the true sense of the word. That he, I mean, he was the best card player on the back of the plane. For the years I was traveling with the team, um, and he's one of the guys, and he's very, very good at what he does. Number one, number two, Paul George is one of those players who 
for whatever reason, I've never seen him play live. Scott and I were talking about that on the air the other day. He had never really seen Paul George play live. He had seen him a million times on TV, but not live. Um, he's a very good player. Um, Kawhi seems like he has decided he's going to be quiet again, and he's taking over games in the fourth quarter. Um, and you bring West guys like Westbrook off the bench who still has some, some game left in him. So, yes, and I can answer your question. I think they, I think next to Denver, the you I see right now, LA and Denver would be the playoff in the West to get to the final. You know, Fred mentioned earlier that, you know, he's been glued to the TV, and I have too, because <laughs> part of it is, is Mike, these games end up being compelling when you think they won't be. Last night, Celtics yes. scored 81 in the first half, and, you know, uh, we were talking like, well, 30 years ago, if you told us, uh, uh, not even 30, hell, 10, 15 years ago, a team scores 81 in the first half, that game is over. They could bench their starters in the second half. But right. uh, Pacers, as Wallach pointed out earlier, a team that never stops playing, they're always in it. Mm-hmm. And there's something mm-hmm. about this Celtics team, as good as they are, they do allow teams to get back a, a little too easily. Uh, that's that's I, I saw I, it last I, I, night. I agree. I agree with you. They, 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 they allow teams back in. Usually it's the third quarter they allow teams back in into games, and they have to really rally to pull them out. Now, for us in television, it makes for great TV uh, because people who didn't plan to watch the whole game at half now find themselves watching on the edge of their seats with three or four minutes to go. Um, there was a stretch uh, about two or three weeks ago, maybe as much as a month ago, where we had Detroit and somebody else back-to-back, in the, not back-to-back, but two games in a row that week. And it turned out to be two of the best games of the year yeah. um, in, in terms of competition. Um, so, yeah, I, that's, the Celtics are going to be tested the rest of the season. You know, they still are. They walk around with this um, attitude that they are the best team in basketball because it says they are. And everywhere they go, it says they are. And I'm not saying that they don't have big egos. I mean, it's like all those guys have big egos who play for every team. You can't play professional sports. You don't have a big ego. But um, they are the – Everybody's got them circled on the schedule is what I'm trying to say. So they, they, they face the best the team has to offer every single night on the other side. And in the meantime, teams like the Knicks are starting to slowly creep up the standings behind them. Um, Knicks are the best team in the NBA, I think, for the month of January. All right. Uh, yeah. So they, They've won eight in a row. I, They're I, in third I, place in the East. I, I, have to ask, yeah. uh, I have to ask Mike a question. Mike, you think LeBron yeah. James is the best player of all time. No one is debating you on that right now. I, what I'm asking you is this. <laughs> I was hoping you were me like that. I, I, but uh, but uh, there is a, a sentiment in basketball circles yeah. that the, it's time for the Lakers, who are under 500 right now, mm-hmm. it yeah. is time for the Lakers to part company with LeBron James. As someone yeah. who is, is such a fan of LeBron James, do you think this is the right well, move I'm for the Lakers? I'm not such a fan of LeBron James. I'm you, just you, you, you go out of your he's way to defend him. Player. You 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 you, you 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 don't understand why people dislike him. You think it's unfair, and you think he's the best player of all time. You're a fan of his. You like him. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So, okay. but but do you think that he the Lakers? Do you think he should stay on the Lakers? What's best for basketball? What's best for LeBron James? What should the Lakers do? Stay Stan Pat. Stan Pat in terms of LeBron, and maybe try to figure out some way to squeeze somebody else decent without giving anything up. And they don't have that much to give up anyway. But um. Yeah, it, the Lakers are Anthony Davis and LeBron, and, and, and if those two guys are playing like they can, they're just about in every game. Whether they win a series, or it's going to be too much for them over a long period of games because they're too old to begin with, that could well happen. But uh, you don't want you don't want to be the first team to take the Lakers in the playoffs. But they'll come in, they'll have rested for two or three days or more, and that'll be good. I mean, look at the numbers that guy puts up every night. It's really, it's ridiculous. Oh no, it's yeah. Insane. It would be more for his benefit, I guess. But and Kendrick Perkins, our old friend Kendrick Perkins said that uh, Miami should trade uh, Butler, Jimmy yep. Butler. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Yeah, but, and, he yeah. Said, and his reasoning is his age and that that the key players on Miami are young right. and that it's t- that Miami should re- rebuild. Would you? What would you do if you I'll were see. Miami? I'd, I'd, I'd trade him, sure. Really? But you're not going anywhere from Miami. I mean, last year was their miracle year. That's not happening again. They're not going to get to the NBA Finals. So if you can put Butler on, There'll be a couple of teams out there that would like a piece of Jimmy Butler if they could get him because it makes them legitimate contenders as opposed to social contenders. And um, get two or three first round draft picks and rebuild. They got to rebuild down there. They got to rebuild around um, other guys, not but not the Butler. That's for sure. All right, you get you got a big home stretch here. Is there a bunch of games you got to call in a row? Is that kind of a drag now that you're not no, doing? No, it's great. You hey, like it? No, this is really good. Yeah, it's really fun. I, you know. I, 
if, if I tell you, if I could do it over again, live the last six months of my life over again, I would not have said anything about retiring. I would wait until March 1st and said something about it. Because every time I go to a game, I feel like I'm going to my own wake. Um, but isn't that cool though? Because like it's everybody like, loves you, Mike. That's what we all wait our whole lives for to show up and have everyone love us. It is like a wake, and I've heard it described that way. Like it, that if like getting getting like retiring is like a living wake. So yeah. you're getting the advantage of getting all these. Uh, usually, we're only lauded on our when when we're in our caskets. You're getting it where you can hear it and internalize it. That's kind of good. You really wish you didn't do it. That, that, that's me sitting next to the flowers over there? Is that what you mean? Mom's exactly. Like, too? usually, like, people <laughs> wait until you're dead, and then there's nothing you can do about it. And, and so, true. like, at least you're hearing it. Like, so, it, but... but no, it, it, Mike, Green, Mike Green said to me, he said, hey, he said, he said, you just have to sit back and let this all watch over you and enjoy it. It does not happen to everybody. Um, and that's the same thing my wife has been telling me. And, it, and it's true. And I, I, I do make the joke about being at my own wake. It's just, and I feel like I'm putting people on a the spot. They feel like if they see me, they have to say something because they're not going to see me ever again. And I want to say, you know, I'll be on the mound. You know, show up somewhere. Yeah, but that's that's just what we do as humans. You know that people are being sincere about it, but you, but for I, our own... I say I mean, but you can't think that. I understand what's going on. I, I, you can't... You go. You got to think like, well, this is kind of like phony. These people all feel like they're going out of their way. And then it makes you uncomfortable. But in reality... You probably should just be enjoying it and, and take it as sincerity. Yeah. You know? You, you, you don't, don't want to be here. You ready for this? Have you ever heard of the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade up at Holyoke? No. No. Okay. It's, I, I hadn't either. It's the second largest St. Patrick's Day Parade in the country. Um, last year, a couple hundred thousand people I guess, showed up to watch Jesus. it. Jesus. Um, and John F. Kennedy was the first one, whoever was the... Uh, what do they call it? Was it Major D, I was going to say. Whoever Major the D. The, 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 the Grand Marshal. The yeah, Grand, Grand Marshal. Marshal. Okay. Yeah. You know who the Grand Marshal is this year? Me. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Mike, yeah. That, Mike huh? Gorman. How about that? Now, this I is where? Holyoke. Where's Holyoke? Holyoke. It's a Western town in Massachusetts. Holyoke. How the hell would I know where yeah. Holyoke is? Western, Western Mass. Out in Western Mass. Now, is it Holyoke, like H-O-L-L-Y, and then the word oak, or is it H O L? O-K-E. O-K-E. Oh, all right. And so you will be riding in, in like, a convertible? No, we walk it two and a half miles. Whoa. They call, yeah. they call it taking you to do it. I said, yeah, I think I can do it. You should ask for the uh, Pope Mobile. You should ask for, like, a, a thing where you could be protected in plexiglass, Mike. I mean, are you sure <laughs> you're going to be openly walking two See, and a half miles? It's yeah. interesting. The Holyoke that's, is that's, just – oh, go ahead. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, no, go ahead. Holyoke is just – it's just about what a couple minutes north of Springfield, right next to the Hall of Fame, yeah. where you also are a member of. Yeah, there you go. We should walk by. It. There you go. There you go. Um, no, I, that, I'm, there, that is stuck me really. When I saw the list of people like Doris Cairns Goodman, and, um, who were on this, John Kennedy, John Kennedy being the first to get it, uh, and then there's my name. Dan Shaughnessy got it a bunch of years ago. It was uh, just a red throw, towering last above night, the and he ground. Just did, but he said, when you look and you see your name amongst these other people, you said, you said, just pinch yourself. They no. They don't put me in the same sentence as JFK. Hey, come on. Um, but they do for I'll some do reason. I, I'm the Irishman of the year. How about that? You like that? Really? Yeah, that's what they said. Oh, look at and you. I haven't done anything except the Irish. I, you know, I got to thank my mom and dad back because I didn't do anything. Do you, uh, myself from. do you ever find yourself at the Basketball Hall of Fame like, like, uh, Loitering around your the like your name like on the however you're displayed there and waiting for people to come by and you go just point like huh <laughs> eh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, not bad huh want want a t-shirt want a t-shirt well it's a it's an entree to a conversation with a lady I'm not gonna lie to you like that's me I don't know what to tell you I'm right here next to Pat Summit. Look at me all right uh, oh, forever well forever you win Pat oh. Summit. What? What? Well, I don't even know why that's bad. Pat Summit's in the Hall of Fame. All right. Uh, we, we start, I, when, I, when I think of what I first heard when I turned on the radio at quarter of seven this morning, and now we got Pat Summit. We better get off before we get in real trouble. Here. He heard the Ionescu conversation about the three point contest, is what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I, I, was actually, I was talking more about Taylor Swift. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Mike Gorman. Big stretch of uh, games for Mike here as he uh, is calling uh, th- this was stretch of home games. Mike, we appreciate everyone watching on NBC Sports Boston. It's always a pleasure, sir. See you, Fred. All right. Take it easy, Mike. There you go.
Mike Gorman. I don't know what he's talking about with the the lady thing. Why is Pat Summit bad? Does anyone know I, what, what, why that's I, bad? I don't know. It's the first Hall of Famer I thought of, to be honest with you, was Pat Summit. <laughs> they let everyone in now. Weber's it should, in. It, it does seem like an odd choice. That's the first one you the go to. So the pantheon of everyone who's played basketball, yeah. you chose Where do my parents coach. coach. You were where, taking where a shot my at him being in the Hall of Fame to begin with, and it's like, oh, here's the, the caliber of... Okay, where do my Peter. parents live? They live in Knoxville. Yeah, so yeah. Pat Summit is the first name that came into my head. For the Basketball Hall of Fame. I swear to God, it's weird, but Pat Summit was the first name that came into my head. That's how not sexist I am. Mm. Look at you. Or how sexy. She so is. your own... Se- well, I love pantsuits. Give me a nice... <laughs> orange. Orange. Pants. Burnt orange pantsuit. Very plain. Oh. And really, really cut that hair. And just be loud and mean in a pantsuit. And stomp around. Perhaps my face. <laughs> Tell me I'm garbage. All right, we'll be right back. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. <laughs> Wondering who made our list of the top five all time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on backstagecountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. Toucher and Hardy, the reviews are in. I got to stay on and talk about you in about five minutes from my time. Hear what he said. Now more of on the Sports Hub. Hey, this hour of Touch for an Artie is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every, every moment more with FanDuel. If you are uh, wondering what uh, John was talking about when he was talking about the three-point contest, I actually uh, have a quite progressive take on this. Uh, John, what is the deal with the three-point contest? They Steph are- Curry's very excited because Steph Curry in the three-point contest is going up an unusual contest. Yes, he is going to oppose the WNBA three-point champ, Sabrina Ionescu, who plays for New York of the WNBA. She set a new record with 37 points in a round last uh, last All-Star game. So they're going to pit Curry against her. Curry shoots from the NBA. No, she's point- shooting for the NBA three. She I is. heard she was only shooting from the international uh, line. No, no. Uh, Curry said she wants to shoot from the NBA. Okay, that, originally that was what was agreed to. All right, to John. Well, team. I'm just telling you that that's okay. not what Steph Curry said. If you must know, be, Do you want to so hear combative. what Steph Curry Fred, had to say? Fred, you're absolutely yes. right. Here is what Steph Curry had to say. My phone was blowing up saying, uh, you know, what Sabrina had done. So I think the fact that we can, you know, join forces, you know, put her uh, front and center uh, at NBA All-Star Weekend. You know, I've done a three-point contest plenty of times. I've won it twice. She's got the record. Uh, she even stepped it up. She said she's going to shoot from the NBA three-point line. So, Kaboom. Uh, I love the confidence. I love the competition. Kabam. It's a, it's a new new format on that stage. Chalk one up for the good guy. Boy, that, <laughs> it's so weird because it's the exact opposite of what Wallach said and pretty pretty definitively, too. <laughs> I just read this last night. Yeah, she even well, stepped I heard up. That she said she's going to shoot from the NBA West three-point Coast line. Basketball. You know, some of us have to what? rise and grind. <laughs> All right, it's called Fred. rising and grinding. Well you done. got your news from last night. I got my news from this morning. You, are, you got your finger on the pulse, Fred. And Score another one for the good guy. And we had audio. <laughs> Way to go. Kaboom. She how, even stepped it up. She said she's going to shoot from the NBA three-point line. How many so, times uh, How many times have I been told I was wrong, and if we just would have had the audio, I would have uh, been proven right? You're right. Right again, Fred. Seldom right and never wrong. All right, do we uh, we did we find the audio that I'm talking about? The lady, okay, they, I didn't figure we would, but there was an ESPN correspondent, and the woman goes, "I'm usually not uh, one here to like triumph women's rights, but she's like, why does this woman? I don't even know her name. Why does this woman have to do the three point contest? She has nothing to prove." And my response was, "Well, so someone would know who she is, or that she has set a three point record. Like she's living in anonymity. Like like she might as well have been at the Y." In, in Chestnut Hill or uh, in Wells Avenue, why shooting three-pointers? No one knows that she hit 25 or 27. Her being in conjunction yeah. of even just doing this 
has informed me that she is doing the thing. And she goes, and I'm afraid of, like, the discourse if she loses. Huh? Yeah. Well, what if she doesn't lose, which is a very real possibility? Why would she lose? Why would you assume she's going to lose? How is a three-point contest in, in – this is not something where Steph Curry is, like, genetically engineered. Like, I guess he has an advantage in strength. But, like, she should be able to shoot yeah. three-pointers as good as Steph Curry. And what if she loses? Who cares? What if she wins? Yeah. The WNBA, the max salary in the WNBA is a quarter of a million dollars. I would think the WNBA wants as many eyeballs on this woman as possible in the hopes that more people would actually watch the product. In fair, this is the best thing that has ever happened to this woman in terms of a money-making potential. I mean, sure. it's bigger than anything she ever did in college. It's bigger than anything she ever did, certainly in the WNBA. What makes hey. a tra- Easy. Now you're just playing any old vas- no, vaginal I- ad to, <laughs> to to try to. I mean, I was looking. I was looking for the woman saying that Sabrina Ionescu has has nothing to prove, and of course she doesn't. But this is the thing where we get back to athletes doing something. It's not enough to do something once. Steph Curry said it in his clip there, right before he said that. Wait, wait, did he say that she was shooting from the from the NBA line or from the internet? I forget. I forget which part it was. Uh, now I can't even play this thing. Everything's jammed. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> crap. Well done. It's Jeez. ruining your oh, jokes. Cra- it's ruining everything. <laughs> no, but the point is, if you do it, everyone wants to see you do it. I didn't see you do it. It happened in a WNBA competition. So now we would like to see you do that, too. And even if you fall short, okay, you're losing the best shooter of all time. There's no shame in that. Why does she have to do it again? Because nobody saw you do it the first time. Why does she have to do it again? Well, she doesn't have to. The idea is that it's a uh, a demonstration of of a a certain skill that happens once a year. But everyone's knocking themselves over to be politically correct. I I, I say I have to protect the women, the fairer sex. No, actually, we we prefer to treat them equally. Well, I found her. I found her point interesting because it was she was saying I usually am not one to like white knight basically for women. But why does she have to do this? And I thought that was an interesting way to phrase it because it's like, well, she doesn't have to do it. The idea is this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to her. <laughs> She's being forced at gunpoint. So if, if you want to get to the like the broader thing of like why, no pun intended, the broader point of like why the she did this for the WNBA and no one cared, I don't know what to tell you, but that's the way that life is. And this is going to make her a lot of money because – She's going to get in front of a lot of eyeballs, and then that means that she can sell a lot of products, which means that people are going to give her a lot of money relatively to talk about their products. Like, if I'm her shoe company, I'm sure she's got some kind of shoe deal. Like, if I'm their shoe company, I'm pretty jazzed up that someone's going to see my shoe for once as opposed to playing in front of, you know, 10 people at Mohegan Sun. You're, you know, in front of a big audience on the NBA All-Star Weekend. That's why. So, no, she doesn't have to do it. So what should she say? Like, I've already proven it. I don't want to do it. Like, that would be kind of like a, a, a garbage thing to do. She, she has her own shoe line. I had no idea. No, listen. There you go. I can only imagine the billions of dollars being traded around for that. Dave Richards down at the Senior Bowl. Your future quarterback might be playing in it. We'll talk to him in just a moment.